Hello, welcome everyone to our reception assembly. We have our learners and stars to celebrate, our storyteller of the week to share, as well as a fantastic East Park wrap at the end. So we have two wonderful nursery learners to share with you this week. Mrs. Lewis has chosen a little boy who's done some fantastic drawing of mini beasts and some excellent cutting skills. And Mrs. Thompson has chosen a little girl based on her excellent adjustment to different routines, her drawing of mini beasts, as well as fantastic phonic skills to segment and blend words together. So very well done to Alan Pachalski and Ulia Andre. <laughs> now we go to reception one to find out who Mrs. Bridgewater's learners and stars of the week are. My learner this week is someone who's been working on her phonics ever since we've stopped going to school. She's been working hard with Miss Rodan and following her lessons. Miss Rodan has been teaching new sounds and my learner has been putting these sounds into words and writing sentences with these words in as well. She's also drawn a frog life cycle this week and labelled the different parts of it. But my favourite was the video that she sent me of her reading some words and sounds. Her mommy told her to slow down because she tried to read them as quickly as she could. My learner this week goes to Kelsey. You are a superstar. Well done. My star this week is going to get recognition for resilience. He's been working so hard at home just like he would at school. It's as though he's taken the classroom home with him. In his learning this week, he has been sorting out some flowers with his mum. He's been engaging with videos and stories about frogs. He's completed some number addition on a number line and he's also looked at the frog life cycle and written some lovely sentences about frogs. My star this week goes to Nicodem. Well done, you are a superstar. Congratulations on your resilient star. So now let's hand over to Mr. Juan to see who the star and learner are for reception to this week. Over to you, Mr. Juan. Thank you, Mrs. Bridgewater. My reception two learner is for a little boy who's done absolutely everything last week. He had a fantastic pirate treasure hunt with his brothers. He's done some excellent writing as well as making some salt dough shapes and reading a fond favourite of mine, Biscuit Bear. He's an absolute superstar. He looks like he's really enjoying himself at home too. We really, really miss him. Well done, Callum Richards. So my reception to star is based on resilience this week. This little boy in question has demonstrated fantastic resilience to go out into the garden and look very closely at different mini beasts to go on a bug hunt and also give a really, really good go to a jigsaw they recently completed. So well done, fantastic resilience to Tyler Eastlow. Congratulations on your resilient star. And now we go over to Mrs. Whiteley to find out who her reception three learners and stars of the week are. Hello Reception 3 and welcome to our class assembly. Right, let's find out who our learner is going to be this week. Our learner this week is a boy and he has been working really hard on the home learning challenges that we have set. This week he has been taking part in some number line addition. He has drew pictures of the frog life cycle and he labelled it and he's been attempting to do all these activities independently. But the one thing that stands out for me is that consistently over the last few weeks he has been sending me home learning. So that is why I've chosen this young man for our learner. And our learner is Jaden. Well done Jaden. Our star this week is a girl and she too has been completing the home learning challenges. This week she's been on a walk to the local park where she was looking at all the plants and the flowers. She visited a pond and she saw lots of ducks and geese. And this inspired her to go home and create her own collage pond. It even had a paper frog in it. She has also been taking part in some self-chosen activities. She has been baking. She did a number jigsaw puzzle. She has been doing some creative activities. She has even been decorating with her dad. So I think this week I'm going to give the creativity star and that star goes to Minnie Rose. Well done Minnie Rose. By the way, I've ordered a tin of paint Minnie Rose so that you can come and help me decorate too. Congratulations on your creativity star. Our early year staff star this week goes to Mrs Bridgewater for her resilience during lockdown. Well done, Mrs Bridgewater. So we move on to our reception storyteller of the week. 
We've chosen a girl who's been incredibly prolific with the amount of fantastic stories she's been sharing with us week in, week out. Amazing blending skills, excellent expression, a true superstar. Well done, Sienna Listrop. So our topic and reception has all been about life cycles this week, butterflies life cycle in particular. And just like many beasts and animals have life cycles, we have life cycles too. You start off as a baby, and there's one currently inside mommy's tummy, isn't there? There's mommy. Hello. There you go. There's mommy. The baby inside mommy's tummy. And then you grow up to be a little boy or a little... And then you have to grow up into a, a grown-up, don't you? So the girl in our story starts off as a little girl that she grows up to. And it's called The Seesaw by Tom Percival. And you've got the bear just like her, don't you? Yeah. yeah? Okay, right. Sophia's bear was old, tatty and very well loved. It had belonged to Sophia's grandfather, then to her mother, and from the day Sophia was born, the bear had kept her company too. He was less like a toy and more like a friend. Sophia and her bear enjoyed picnics in the park, long walks through the woods, and one day they even went to the seaside. It was a very long journey. Sophia and her father had to catch a train, a boat, and then finally a bus, but it was worth it. Have you caught a train, a boat, or a bus before? The beach was amazing. Sophia even took off her bear's scarf so they could splash in the waves. Her father bought fish and chips and they all had ice cream for Buddy. It really was the most perfect day until the storm clouds rolled in. Froggy bear. Thunder clapped, lightning flashed, raindrops pounded down onto the sand as they packed everything up and rushed for the last bus home. They were in such a hurry that neither of them noticed the bag fall open and Sophia's bear tumble out. <gasps> it's gone. After the storm had blown over, the bear sat alone on the wide empty beach and nobody saw but the sea. After a while, a seagull flew down and pecked curiously at the bear. The sea saw this and did not like it one little bit. The sea knew how sad the girl would be to have lost her bear and so it decided to help. As it took hold of the battered bear, it almost seemed to whisper, I will take you home. Of course, when Sophia realised that her bear was missing, she was terribly upset. She looked everywhere, but he was nowhere to be seen. Her father telephoned the bus company and the train company and the boat company, but nobody had found a tatty old bear. And as soon as they could, they returned to the beach, but there was no bear there. We know where it is, don't we? Where is it? It's in the sea. Sophia's father gave her other toys to try and replace the bear she'd lost, but none of them were right. None of them had belonged to her mother, and all that Sophie had left now was the bear's small scarf. She snipped a piece off, placed it in her locket for safekeeping, and tried to carry on as best she could. But it was just so hard. Now, it's incredibly difficult to return something when you have no idea who the owner is or where they live. But even so, the sea tried. It washed the bear along through the water, helped by shoals of shimmering fish, a whale, a dolphin, and even an octopus. The bear hitched a lift on a boat, and he was carried along by a seal. The sea always found a way to guide the bear through the water, but it was not an easy journey. When the wind grew cross, whipping the water into towering waves, the sea carried the bear to safety. When the waters grew too cold, the sea would wash the bear onto land. And then with spring, the journey would begin again. The sea became concerned. It was all taking so long. It carried the bear to every beach and every dock and every harbour too, but with no luck. And so the search went on, beyond the oceans, into lakes and along rivers, which was how the bear came to be gently drifting down a stream one sunny afternoon. Look, oh, look at 
that. A young girl saw the bear floating in the shallow waters and went to investigate. Curious, she picked it up and called out to her grandmother to tell her all about this exciting new find. Slowly, the old lady walked out of the house and then she stopped. She stared silently for a moment, then rushed forward to scoop up the bear. Sophia hugged her bear close for the first time in many, many years she did. You see, nothing is ever truly lost if you keep it in your heart. She was Sophia a little girl anymore. No. She's an old lady, isn't she? Yeah. It's taken that long, hasn't it? Together everyone achieves more in every situation. That's why we always focus on collaboration. We deal with other people, we have to be correct. To make sure we treat each other with respect. We can be the greatest artists in the world from England to Italy. But to do that we have to embrace our creativity. We all know the truth is the best policy. All that we do, we try to show honesty. You have to try hard if you want to show brilliance. To get through the tough times, we be resilient. We stronger now go from any interference. We have to keep going, we need perseverance. We are independent, homework to attendance. To do well, you need lots of independence. Everyone's a leader, a champion, a chief. If you want to achieve, you need self-belief. to all of our learners and stars this week well done to our storyteller hope you enjoyed the story i'm sure you'll all agree a fantastic rap from our east park children too don't forget to send in some work to us we've got half term fast approaching and we want to hear from everybody so please make sure you get in touch with us through email by the end of this week thanks for watching take care have a great half term bye bye help us to take care of each other and grow our hearts and minds. Thank you.